While studying for a degree, or maybe after you've finished, I know there's a lot of people who are just lost and what direction should they go in, what career path to choose. So today we're going to be discussing in one of the possible career paths that you may be having, some myth, some misconceptions about it, some interesting actually facts about it, as well as what's the career moves or career trajectory you can take, as well as some outlining some salaries that these positions are also getting. This career path, in my opinion, is a lot of the times a bit overlooked or maybe frowned upon. And I don't think a lot of people are educated on what it actually means or what it really entails, unless you're maybe you had some class in your college, university on it or about what software development life cycle is like and what it entails. And a lot of the time you may not even know that this exists, yet it literally affects every single user, every single user of the modern day technology. So this is a career that has a huge impact within everything that we use in our everyday life, your smartphone, your cars, your smartwatches, it's basically everywhere. And we are going to dive deeper in trying to understand what it is. So let's start off with what is software testing. Now, Software testing is a process within the software development lifecycle, one of its phases of it, and it involves verifying that the application system meets the requirements, basically. Software testers basically try to validate and verify that the software is basically bug-free, that it meets the requirements or the designs, and yet yeah, there are no issues while trying to use an app or a system. But I do want to preface that there is yet no system that is 100% bug free and there probably never will be because there's just too many devices and combinations of you being able to use these applications these days that yeah, it's just a lot of variations. And again, some other apps may be interacting with the app that you are working on. So yeah, there's a lot of factors basically being in the middle of this. Now let's try to tackle some myths versus reality. So some myth, this is hard to pronounce, sorry. Some myths, ah, I need some Google. Myth. This one. We are gonna go through some common myths. Okay, so common ones being, testing is manual and boring. Testers don't write code. There's no growth in quality assurance. Testing is a backup career. Now let's talk about some realities. Modern testing is actually, can be very deeply technical. There's a lot of debugging, coding. You have to, sometimes you really have to go and dig into the code and try to understand where the issue is coming from, how you may be able to reproduce it. So you may have to go through code and try to see what is the thing that is triggering the issue. So it's a big misconception that you basically don't do any technical aspects of it, as well as there is automation where you can be automating tests and basically writing code, uh, setting up CI and everything. So there's a lot of aspects that are actually pretty technical and it's, I would say, depends on you as a person if you want to move into more technical details or not. You can also stay in the manual side, but it still requires a lot of analytical thinking. Next one is, uh, it's actually one of the most cross-functional and high impact roles, meaning that, well, first of all, you get to work with a lot of different teams, like developers, design, pro product owners, you get to interact with all of them, trying to clarify everything and whatnot. And so you are literally like in the epicenter of it all because you have to clarify things. Well, usually you have to clarify things. And yeah, if you are creating issues, you need to, you know, talk with developers, how you may maybe solve it, or maybe clarify again some details about issues or maybe design, or maybe requirements about the system that maybe don't make sense, maybe you have better suggestions. So you may be wearing a lot of different hats and at the end of the day, you may be communicating with a lot of different teams and you are involved very deeply in the product development process itself. But listen, the main question is, why is it a good career 
choice for someone like you. Now I'm going to be sharing you the points that I came up with why this is a great career choice for someone like you or it may be interested to you to figure out if it's something you should be trying to research more on. First great point about being a software tester is you get to break things for a living and this is you can actually hear it, hear it a lot from other QAs that they just like to break things and they like to try and figure out why something isn't working. So it requires as well analytical thinking and a lot of attention to detail because yeah, you have to go through like designs and check is it pixel perfect or not and stuff like that you have to go through. So it requires a lot of analytical thinking so you can debug these things and just going through intricate details to really verify that it meets what was designed, written, developed. So yeah. And still, guys, you get to break things for a living. It's it's pretty fun and you can make you can make it fun, I would say. From, from my perspective, to me, it's the fun part. And yeah, another aspect, of course, is it's a great way to get into tech, especially if you're like scared into getting into coding right away or it's something that you are interested in, but not sure yet. This is a great path to start in and then maybe move into coding later on. You can develop a lot of skills around software because you get to go through designs, maybe help out with trying to figure out a better approach as well as the requirements. Like sometimes you as a tester know the system better as maybe someone who is writing the requirements and you may be pitching in, hey, maybe you need to take in mind that this and this will in basically disturb the feature that we are developing and you can give in your input and maybe a better approach. It really does depend, of course, on the company that you work in, if you have a voice or you don't, but you can wear a lot of hats if you are working in that type of company and you can have very big impact where you can literally see it being developed in front of your eyes. Now that to me is uh, yeah also a great bonus. Next is definitely that you have a lot of career growth opportunities. If you want to move into coding, you can move into coding. If you want to move into management, you can move into management. And later on we will discuss a few of the roles that I compiled, but honestly there's a lot of them that you can be moving into, whatever interests you. And it's not as like there's a lot to choose from. The next is definitely that there is high growth opportunities and demand. Now, of course, you want to be choosing a career where you will be valued, well, you, well, people will be wanting to hire you as well as just a career that is high in demand and software, building software, working on software, that's, yeah, that's sort of the future that we're building and you are part of it. So high growth and demand. Now I know maybe people on the internet may be saying some other things, but the job market fluctuates a lot. There is better times, not the best times. Next is definitely you have always new things to learn, even after... How old am I? Well, I've been in this QA thing for... I think it's, it's supposed to be like 10 years. I'm not really sure. It's been a while. And I always learn new things. Like every day I learn something new. And... But I, I think another aspect is that I also work in a startup, so it's a bit fast paced, but I get to learn new things every single day and there's still so many things I want to learn. So yeah, I'm never, never complaining about not learning anything new. Next is definitely that there's flexibility. Some roles let you be remote. Some roles let you maybe have other arrangements. You may also be working as a contractor if, if it's something that suits you, maybe work periodically, maybe freelance. There's a lot of opportunities to be trying to like move into. And the last very important point that I technically already sort of mentioned is innovation. You get to participate in the future that is being built right in front of your eyes. Like what? That is very unique. And who knows, you may be building the next Facebook, Google or whatnot, and you may be the early QA within the company. And that to me is like once in a lifetime opportunity that these days doesn't really seem that impossible. There is apps, systems being built all over the place in so many different markets. Yeah, it's, it's 
you're ahead of the, you're like in the future like building it it's yeah it's crazy and it's exciting to be a part of that and the last one actually that i just actually remembered is that there's a lot of niches to be choosing from what i mean by this for example you are interested in cars or car markets or how car software is built there's literally companies doing that you could be a qa you know car software company if you're interested in gaming there's so many gaming testing roles available so basically there's a lot of niches you can be moving into something that interests you or yeah something that you want to learn so there's a lot to choose from industry niche wise and I think there's something for everyone to be found within the niches or industries that you're interested in. And yeah, you can become an expert, for example, a QA expert in the car industry niche or gaming niche or virtual reality niche or yeah, just the possibilities of that is endless. And I think every one of us can find something that we would be very passionate about within there's like, the possibilities are endless. Now we're going to be touching upon the types of roles and salaries which I have taken from the US market in 2025. This is May today, like springtime. So this is taken from Glassdoor, all the averages and the ranges. That's the word. So first role is junior QA. Junior QA can bring in from 57 to 101 K a year averaging out about 75k a year. Next is automation test engineer. Automation test engineer can bring in from 104k to 162k, averaging it out to 129k yearly. QA engineer. QA engineer can bring in from 77k to 132k, averaging it out to 100 K a year. Now a QA lead slash test lead can bring in from 75k a year to 137k a year, averaging it out to 99k a year. Now security tester. A security tester can bring in from 102k a year to 179k a year, averaging it out to 126k a year. Game tester. Game tester can bring in from 44k to 81k a year, averaging it out to 59k a year. A mobile tester can bring in from 64k a year to 116k a year, averaging it out to 85k a year. Performance tester. Performance tester can bring in from 80k a year to 142k a year, averaging it out to 106k a year. And the last one, QA manager slash test manager can bring in from 103 K a year to 180k a year, averaging it out to 136k a year. Okay, that was a lot of numbers. And sorry, I couldn't go into details what each role does, but this is just to give you a perspective of the possibilities to grow into and how on average they pay. This didn't include bonuses though. There's a lot of bonuses in the US you get via stocks, via, I don't know. I don't actually know until like in the very detail how those bonuses are calculated there, but there's a lot of bonuses actually. These roles were getting, some were getting up to 30K a year in bonuses. So this wasn't calculated in these. And honestly, a lot of people from software testing, being a quality assurance engineer, have moved in into development and they may be actually having a very different perspective. Like if you've spent the last years trying to break things and now you're trying to build things, you probably have a different perspective and what to look out for while you are building it or what to take in mind. So this can also be a very unique perspective and I've had some colleagues who have done this before and it's very interesting to see how they develop things or how they are working, so yeah. It's very also a great possibility to move into software development later on if you're interested in that. I hope this cleared up some questions for you guys or at least gave you a direction that you can start in like learning more about and getting to know on more and who knows maybe in the future we will be colleagues. So I'm very excited for you to be even watching this video, which means that it's something that you are interested in or are trying to learn in and, you know, 
get information on. And I would really do appreciate if you would leave a like and a comment. It really does help my channel out so I can continue creating more helpful content for you guys. And that's basically it, guys. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.